the show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Whether you're new to sales or a lifetime veteran, the Black Belt Sales Podcast will sharpen your sword and guide you to master the art of sales. And now, here's your host, the ninja himself, Gene Slade. Hey, welcome back to the Black Belt Sales Podcast. I have got my main man, Don Johnson, in the booth with me again today. And we're finishing up a podcast from that we did from when was it Thursday, right? Because today's Tuesday. Yeah. So Thursday. And uh, so this is kind of a continuation. If you are listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or one of those that doesn't have video, man, after this episode, I think you're going to be compelled to go over there and hit the five star button and give us a review. If we do a good job for you today, would you make me that promise that at the end of this episode that you'll go over there even right now, if you can pause it, if this is like on a replay, go over there and hit that five star for us helps to shoot this podcast out to more people, recommend it to more people. So if you believe that other people could benefit from this, like we all know they can, please do that for us. And if you're watching on one of our video streams, go ahead and put live if you're watching us live down in the comments. Please, that's the fee for the show. That's all we ask. And if you're watching this on a replay, just put replay down in the comments. Don, welcome to the show again. How are you doing this morning? Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks for putting this together. It's always exciting to get to come and chat sales and how to close more. So I'm excited, excited to get to to be part of that. So let's just dive right in. So uh, around this time of the year when things are not too hot and they're not too cold, I mean, I know that it's cold some places, right? But we're, we're getting ready to roll into, again, what people in our industries or in the service trades call the shoulder season, right? Right. So we want to get prepared for that. We want to get prepared for the things that we're going to run into. And the first one that I think we're going to run into more than anything is I want to think about it. And you and I both know the reasons that happen. But why don't we just share one or two reasons that that actually happens with our, our, our client or our customer audience base here? Well, first of all, I want to think about it because people get too literal about that. I won't... I, I want to delay giving you a decision. Those will not be the words that come out of their mouth, but they'll, they'll, that becomes the category of all of these objections. I want to think about it. I need to talk to the spouse. Uh, I need to do some research online. I need to talk to the neighbor, talk to my accountant, got to look at my budget, all of those things. <laughs> I want to delay giving you a decision. God, man, you just, like, I felt so much pain with every single one of those. Like, why did you have to hit me with, like, eight all at the same time? You're taking me back, man. It, and sometimes people will be like, well, I've never heard you say something about, you know, when they say something about the the accountant or the neighbor or whatever. No, they all fall into the same category. I want to delay giving you a decision. And Don, let me let me ask the people that are watching on video right now. Will you please put down the number one or the number one and number two objections that you get out there in the field? Keep going, Don. Yeah. So I want to delay giving you a decision. Comes out in most situations as I want to think about it or I'll call you later. Right. Those those two are. I'll call you. My wife will get home tonight. She 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 took the checkbook and my manhood with her when she went to work. I'm going to rub her feet, do the dishes, cook dinner for her. And tonight we'll talk. And then tomorrow. I'll call you. I'll call you. Yeah. All right. So, so I want to think about it. I want to delay giving you a decision. Probably back to your original question has to do with a sense of urgency problem. Yeah. Yeah. We often in our business can say what, you know, what do they need? But we often say, why do they need it now? And we can't really give them an answer, right? If we can't answer yeah. our own question, why should they buy now? You think the client's going to be able to answer that any better than us? So how do we get ourselves, ourselves to how do we get ourselves to that point, Don? Well, we have to think in terms of what is 
the penalty for waiting mentality. Okay. You know, if if you could pay a bill today or pay it in 30 days from now and it's the same bill, most of us will just wait 30 days. Yeah. For another paycheck or two. And then we'll pay our rent or we'll pay our truck note or our car note. Right. Our insurance. We tend to wait to the last day. So to a client, we just gave them a notice that you're going to have to pay some money. But they have this they don't have this date or, or issue and a pending event and pending event that causes it to be something that we have to do quickly. Right. So right. I want to think about it as often a sense of urgency problem, not a need for a closing technique, but a closing technique to go drag out a little bit of that sense of urgency is, is probably what, what you need to be thinking about. So quick why question. Did, why, why did they need to buy now are very different questions. So quick question. Um, let's think, let's just unpack real quick, like 30 seconds, this, I want to think about it. Um, when, listen very closely, guys. When a man or a woman says, I want to think about it, they already thought about it and stopped thinking. I'm going to say that one more time. When a man or woman says, I want to think about it, they already thought about it and stopped thinking. If it were free, would they need to think about it? Unless there was a trust issue. Mm -hmm. If it were free, would they need to think about it? So is I, I want to think about it a real objection, Don? No, it's not. you. If it were free, they would move forward. So therefore, it tells you it's not really the objection. I, I don't need to smoke think screen. about. It's a smoke screen for what legitimately probably is the real objection. And that is money. Or I'm too embarrassed to tell you I don't have the money or can't afford it, right? That's very typically what people get embarrassed to talk about finance. And there's a lot of techs in our field that just don't have the internal strength to ask about the money. Yeah, it's true. It just, it's true. They, I, mean, I, I don't have the rights to ask them about money. Yes, you do. Yes, how you many do. of you out there, I want to know the people that are watching right now. This is This is the time where you engage, all right? I want a yes or a no. Maybe even a hell yes or hell no. Um, could you say this to a client without feeling uncomfortable? You ready? Do you have that much money? <laughs> could you say that? Do you have that much money? Another way to say it could, would be, is this affordable? Or is it affordable? Or can you afford it? I actually ask contractors that every single day. And, and, and I'm desensitized to it. And I ask clients that every single day when I meet with them. I'm desensitized to it. I've never one time, Don, had somebody say to me, um, it's none of your damn business. Yeah. But it, I'm not I'm not being a jerk about it either. I'm going, do you have that much money? Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to be like above them. It's all about delivery. Well, and most people are sitting there trying to figure out how are they going to get the money yeah. or change their, take it from where, pull it out of their budget. They don't, they don't, understand they don't see how they're going to do they're going to handle this and it's our responsibility i want to use say the job but it's our responsibility to show them how they can do this and oftentimes the business goes to the guy who shows them how to how they can afford it more than it goes to the contractor that does the best job right this is so good this is so good. Don is giving you guys gold here, and I don't know if you're picking it up, all right? Because it's very, very subtle. And and unless and you're a master, you might not have just picked this up. He said they can't see how they can afford it. Let that sink in. They can't see how they can afford it. I think it's something like 60% of America, Don, does not have $600 in their savings account. So when you go hit them with five or 10 or 20 or $25,000, they can't see how they can afford it. And they're not in this industry and they don't know that financing and payment plans and all that stuff's available. So the client's got to get to a place where they're uncomfortable enough to want a solution to a problem. You've got to have the solution. Then you've got to be able to help them to see that they can afford it. And Don, on a $25,000 project, that could be what, $300 a month? Could it, could it be that low? Yeah. 
Um, there's plans with yeah with 1.0 something payment factors, okay. but 1.3 payment factors are very normal. So 250 to 300 dollars is the low number. I will agree you'll get payment factors a little higher than that. Uh, you can always find high payment factors. But, and if they can afford that, Don, there's also an offset. That's not their net monthly outlay, is it? No. When you do this, they, they may be repairs they're not going to have to do in the future. There may be service agreements they're not going to have to pay for that might be in part of your program. But There's the biggest part is there is less energy if it's HVAC or pl- um, an HVAC call. Yeah, they're, they're going to stop overpaying on their utilities. Um, and, and very typically, you see 20, 30 percent uh, utility overpayment on a HVAC system. The old 12 seer, 13 seers that we see all the time could easily be replaced by 18s nowadays. So you could you could see fifty dollars, a hundred dollars a month in energy savings, which offsets that amount of money that they're paying. Right. Like if I'm saving one hundred dollars a month on average on my energy bills and I got a three hundred dollar a month bill for the AC, I'm really only out of pocket two hundred dollars a month. I hope that you guys are coming up. Here come my balloons. <laughs> you guys can't see it if you're on Spotify or on Apple, but um, you're only out 200. So you got to start thinking this way, guys. You got to be able to show the clients, help them to see that they can afford it. I had to interrupt you there, Doc, because it's so it's such gold what you're saying. Well, and sometimes a repair today, average what thousand dollar repair. Maybe some areas you might say eight hundred. Other areas you might say eleven, twelve hundred. Average repair nowadays, but that is four to five months of payments just right out of the gate. And most people don't think that way either. It's a thousand dollars. I Well, you could make four payments, How, you know, and four payments on your new system would, would save you 400 more dollars on your power bill. In that same example that you had 300 to $200. So it's getting them to see, visualize, understand, how they can pay. And again, a lot of clients are embarrassed to tell you they can't afford it or they're broke. And there's a selection of that uh, people out there that love to cry money, but most people don't want to tell you, you know, they're broke and, or can't afford or can't see how they can pay for it. So you have to make it easier for them to feel comfortable with you to open up. Can you say, more about that is a wonderful phrase to get them talking to open up now what would you say that after so you would say can you say more about that but you would say that after they said what well after they gave you well i can't afford that or i don't have that much money or you know how am i supposed to can you say you anytime they've given you kind of a vague answer pushback answer can you say more about that um I wanted to and have for years. Can you tell me more about that? And that's putting me as the priority versus can you say more about that? Letting them talk. So I never really a thought small watermelon that. right there. Can you say more yeah. versus can you tell me more? Um, it's almost the same, but it's a it's a pushy push pull relationship. Say more yeah. is I'm just letting them tell me what they feel comfortable uh, about versus dragging them out or whipping it out of them. So so can you say more about that? And they probably will give you the answer. Say, look, I was on, I only have $10,000 set aside for this project. And now you're telling me it's going to be $20,000. And now we can handle that. Yes. We that's can handle that. But it took questions and listening to get to this stage, which is which is why it's so true that a client, if you just listen to a client, they'll tell you exactly how to close them. But you have to be comfortable enough knowing that you've got all of the rebuttals down, right? And if you don't have them down, you want to get out to one of our next classes in Orlando, March 20 through the 24th. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But Don, it seems like you're moving towards the conversation of, um, look, I, I want to I want to put this off, right? That's kind of the direction it sounds like you're going. So we should probably talk about how people can overcome that. Right. And the, I want to think about it. I want to delay giving you a decision after you've got them to talk about it and they, 
they've revealed everything that you could get and they and they just i've got to you know I, i'll call you later i'll do it in the fall yeah i'll call you later we'll talk about it but that that i want to delay giving you a decision i want to think about it blah blah you got to then turn around and say is there you got to make sure they really feel like that this work needs to be done not yeah you know that the problem needs to be fixed not that they this will not work from, yeah this will not work if the client has not come to the conclusion almost on their own if not on their own that this actually does need to be done and they're just really trying to put it off that uh, one the the book the what uh, the one sentence persuasions or something um <laughs> basically says you and the a have to get so mad at the existing situation they'll throw rocks at it right? <laughs> that's so, that's russell brunson i i remember him saying that yeah there's a one minute or one sentence persuasion uh booklet that's out there that that has that in there and it, it just really they have to want to say i do not want to keep this existing situation the yep. way it is i don't want this i'm not going to deal with this old furnace anymore i'm they have to hate the way things are right now. That's exactly it. They have to hate the way things are. Because once you leave, the emotion will die down and it'll yep. come back to the logic of, I got a brother-in-law who will just put some tape on it and yeah. it's going again, yep. right? You know, that I got a member at church that will come in. He's, you know, he just got out of prison, but he's a good guy and he'll come out and he'll fix this thing and get me air going. That that whole logic starts to starts to weigh on people's minds because the emotion just dis dissipates once you're once you're gone. Yeah. So you have to get them certain that they're <laughs> and, and you know, they have to basically say out loud that they do not want to keep this existing. I'm so you know, mad about this existing situation. I'm not going to keep it. So is there any doubt in your mind that something has to be done about this old heat pump that you have here, this old furnace you have here? Is, some, is there any doubt in your mind? Oh, no, we definitely got to do it. Why? Why do you feel that way? So now you're, you're handling the I want to think about it objection right now. That's exactly okay. it. That I want to think about it. I want to make sure they're really it in a way. We don't call it a takeaway close, but in a way, what you're thinking to yourself is, I'm going to try to take this away from them. I'm going to try to talk them out of doing it. <laughs> okay. I used to do this <laughs> when they talk, when they when they talk themselves into it. That opposite mentality, but when they grab hold of it, they're they're going to it's going to be solid for them. So, are, is there any doubt? in your mind that something has got to be done about this old furnace that you have here. And the client goes, no, there's no doubt. Oh, why? Why do you feel that way? Well, it's been breaking down on me and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's noisy and, and I know it's getting old. Yeah. And I, and I agree with you and, you know, it's old, it's inefficient. It's, uh, when we get parts for them, they're just getting more and more expensive. It's out of warranty. And you can just about get a new one with a warranty for what you're overpaying on your utility bills. So, yeah, I agree with you. Something has to be done about this old furnace. Is there any doubt in your mind as to my ability or the ability of my company to do this job right for you? I don't think so. Oh, why? Why do you feel that way? I see your guys' trucks around. And, I mean, I know that you've been in the community for a long time. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and we're in over 7,000 homes a year. So we know the codes. We know the construction. We know what works and what doesn't. You know, your home's not going to be a testing ground or a training ground. We'll get the job done right for you, saving you time and money. And with with us, you get a satisfaction guarantee. So there is no way you can lose when you do business with us. So, yeah, I agree with you. We are the company to do this type of work for you. Level with me. How do you feel about the money? So we're going to get, them, get them back to the money conversation. Yep. And But we just wanna, eliminated what? Is there a sense of urgency? Do they really believe this needs to be done? And do they trust us? And we got them to say why. And we supported them with more reasons, right? So exactly. the only thing left is the money. If it were free, wouldn't they go ahead, right? So it's yeah. got to be the money. We just have to 
earn the right is the way I like to say, we have to earn the right to get to that and bury that original objection. So it's not so much that you really need to think about it. You've thought about it. It's the money, isn't it? So before we bring this home for them, before we give them the rest of the golden goose here, right? And then share with them the, 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 the chocolate sauce on top with the ROI uh, close. Before we do that, um, let's talk about March 20th through the 24th in Orlando, Florida at the Grand Hollow Mansion is the next Black Belt sales training class. And you want to be there. You have to be there. It'll be 90 days probably before we're able to do one again. And you don't want to set yourself back that far. You want to put mansion down in the comments, or if you're listening on Spotify or something, just go ahead and text me. My cell number is 239-848-6533. 239-848-6533. Before I go on, Don, I saw you gestured with your hands. You were going to say something. Well, I don't... The- it's a big enough event that you get some interaction with some great people, but it's a small enough group that you get a lot of one-on-one role play and practice and really getting this stuff internalized. What is it? About 20 people in the group somewhere in that range that we, we, uh, we have room for as many as 24 to stay with us at the mansion. Okay. So 24. So you're in a big enough group. You can feel safe, right? Herd mentality. They can, you can feel safe sitting there. But it's a small enough group that you can get your individual question asked. You can you can sit by the pool. You can relax and ask those questions to Gene, to myself, to other guys at this event that have been before. It is amazing how many times people come back to these events. There's then they and they it just clicks for them even more. So over and over again. Yes, and I love to see love to see. Uh, uh, some of you guys down there love love to do that, get that role play going. This is probably the last event before the before really our Super Bowl season, right? We're Super right. Bowl season, typically air conditioning through the summer. This is the one you want to get to, or you may it may not be able to get to one this before this the heat comes in your area, right? Do Every you want to go to war with a dull sword? Do you want to go out to to chop down trees with a dull axe? Does that make any sense whatsoever? Should we not get ourselves sharpened up before we go to war? And that's what we're talking about. You guys are, some, especially in the HVAC field, you guys are about to go to war. Plumbers, electricians, you're all uh, pest control guys, roofers, garage door guys. I know you guys are always at war. But like this is like an intense season for the HVAC community. So right. we're going to be going over how to not just to close more systems, but to how to actually get two, three, four thousand, ten thousand dollar tickets when there's no equipment replacement on the table. Guys, I know that you want to sell systems, but would it be the worst thing in the world to have an average of three or four thousand dollars in IAQ going on to every job as well? Would that be terrible? And if you don't have the replacement, you can still be able to sell that stuff. So we're going to be going over the IAQ processes the water treatment sales processes. Um, if you've got new guys to the field, we literally just had an installer come out last uh, last class, um, and he went back in thirty five thousand dollars in sales his very first week in a truck. So this is no joke. This class is no joke. Um, pound for pound, it is the cheapest place that you can go from a sales training perspective. Do we charge more for our tickets? Yes, but pound for pound, we are the cheapest in town. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, and it's you can learn some some great things, but I like to say that when you come to these classes, it's you now have something to implement. Many classes teach you sales and expect you to go theory. Your yeah, and implement it yourself. We're trying to get you to implement it. I'm sitting there saying, all right, establish the need for or um, go through the, I want to think about it close one more time, or how are you going to do that follow-up? I mean, that conversation happens so much. How are you yep. going to do that follow-up call? What are you, what's your purpose of the follow-up call and how are you going to get to that conversation? So we don't just give you the information. We sit there and actually practice it. And it's funny because I can tell you 
exactly what to say. And then your mind, you change it and out it comes different. We got to say, that's not, that's not what we said. Do it one more time. It takes three or four times. And it's amazing, funny, amazing when some, when the light bulb clicks it. Oh, you meant for me to actually say it like you said it? Yes. If this is going to work, if this has worked for others, why change it? Guys, why this is it? this is no different than training to be, let's say, a master mechanic, right? You have to have a master mechanic to teach you how to be a master mechanic, right? It's no different here. It takes a certain amount of time to develop your mechanical skills. You'll only ever be worth $30, $40, $50 an hour with your hands ever for the rest of your life. But if you can add communication skills to your technical skills, there is no limit. Millions. You can be a multi-multi-millionaire, right? But you've got to learn the communication side. If you learn that, if you if you devote your life to that, I promise you, you'll live the life of your dreams, and that's what we're creating here. We're teaching people how to make a quarter million, half million, million dollars a year as a salesperson, right? Working for somebody else's company. So put Mansion down in the comments if you want somebody to reach out to you. Or um, if you prefer, you can text me at 239-848-6533. 239-848-6533. Just a quick overview of what that's going to look like. You're going to show up on Wednesday, which is the 20th of March at 6 p.m. That is check-in. We will have some food there for you. We'll have some drinks there for you. We will just mingle and kind of get to know one, enough, one another. Some people will be playing pool, foosball, basketball, uh, swimming out in the lazy river or sitting by the fireplace or just hanging out inside of this really cool, cool place. So um, Thursday, the 21st, the 22nd and the 23rd, Thursday, Friday and Saturday are our training days. The first two days are sales training days. The last day is an implementation day where Don will take the younger technicians. And when I say younger technicians, I mean the less experienced, the ones that haven't been here for a long time, the ones that are not selling three, four, five million dollars a year. And he will work on the implementation with them of everything that they just learned so that when they come back, they've got turbos on their back and they're just flying. Okay. And then I will take the higher ticket salespeople, um, comfort advisors, people who are selling, you know, seven figures already. And we're going to show you how to add a million or two million or three million dollars on top of that on Saturday. All right. So that's that's what it's going to look like. And then you'll leave on Sunday morning. So Wednesday and Sunday are your travel days. You want to leave out late, late Saturday night. You can do that as well. Uh, but we've got some really amazing stuff planned for you. Housing's included. Uh, all your food's going to be included. All you got to do is get yourself there. An Uber and a plane ticket. Right? Orlando, Orlando. And then basically uber to the house it's yep. so simple and once you're there you, you don't have to leave everything is, is typically provided for you um, so let's bring this back to the i want to think about it we've already found out that the client feels like the work needs to be done that they trust us to do it you just got down to the money and you've been like how much um, how do you feel about the money and i was like it's a lot of money and you're like can you say more about that and i'm like yeah well i've only budgeted ten thousand, and you've got five thousand here so that that can that easily can be handled with payment plan closes. But what about when I say, Don, um, my neighbor got one for like eight grand less? Now where do I go? Yeah, it's it's in that same we're talking about. When someone says it's money, is it they don't have the money or their perception is it should have been less money? In this case, right. they, they thought it should have been less money. Would you like to know why more people go with us regardless of any difference in price? And now you've got their permission to say why people should buy from you. You know, we, we're in homes, we're in over 7,000 homes a year. We're, we know the codes construct. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I want to give them the. I want to give the HVAC guys one extra little question they could ask if they don't want to use that one. You could also say if you got specific numbers. I'm at twenty grand, and they said eight grand less. I could say, would you like to know why more people invest in a home comfort, uh, invest twenty k in a home comfort system with us when they can get a furnace and air conditioner down the street for twelve k. Exactly. Right. You can unpack that later if you want to rewind the tape. I'm not going to spend any more time on it. Keep going, Don. Yeah, And when you have some specific situations, you can customize that to fit that specific situation. Right. Yes. 
Would you like to know why more people have us to do it, even when they have a family member that that says they yeah. could put this in on this on the side for them? Ooh, that's you, a good one. You can make that sentence w- work to your advantage, no matter the situation. You just have to know its structure. Would you like to Boys know? Boys and girls, I just learned more, something today. I never people. thought about you utilizing it in that scenario. I never thought about that. That's beautiful. <laughs> Like to know why more people choose us to do this work, regardless of any difference in price, even though they have a neighbor who who says they got it cheaper, whatever the sentence is. And then you need to have 10 reasons, features and benefits, as we like to call them. But you need to have 10 reasons why people should buy from you. Come to the training. We'll give you 40. I think it's actually 35 different reasons um, that for comfort advisors, that, that we can you can memorize or you can pick out 10. And for selling like. techs. Yeah, selling techs. Uh, there's four or five that are equipment related. There are several that are just, you know, are obviously a service related. And then a bunch of them are, are company structure guarantee related. So so depending on the situation, all 35 not might not be relevant. But if you know if you know they exist, great. You just need to pick the 10, 12, 15 that fit your situation and most people won't eat, you won't even need 10 but you need to be prepared with more than you really will probably ever use right? guys we're we're loaded for bear when you come to the the mansion event the black belt seals training class we are loaded for bear that is there is nothing you can throw at us that we are not prepared for you cannot stump us you cannot give us any objection that we cannot handle i just want to let you know that and promise you that in advance if there's anything you have been struggling with period um we will give you the answers there and we had at least a half a dozen guys last year that within 30 days increased their income a hundred thousand bucks a year an additional hundred or more thousand a year so no bs if you've got a two or three million dollar sales guy you need to send them out to us because i'll add a million or two million dollars a year like that to their revenue as long as you've got the calls for them three calls a day yeah sounds sounds crazy sounds sounds almost like you know the hype but it really is very close to being that exact is when guys who have a process add how to close that process wow the the numbers can go up dramatically just some very simple things that you those guys can add to what they're doing asking better questions (laughs) writing it down on a piece yep. of paper and then knowing how to handle a little bit of objections and pushbacks that they're, they're getting that they're walking away from right now. Those right. are huge for those guys. So, so Massive. What, what if, uh, you know, again, what if someone says, you know, I think, you know, I appreciate all the work. I'm, we're definitely going to do, we're going with you, but let's, we're going to do it next year. We're going to do it. You know, we're going to do it later. How are we, how are we going to handle that situation? Versus Man, I was think about it. Yeah, I was really hoping that we would have the time to get to that today, Don. I really <laughs> want talk too much on this stuff. Yeah. A little bit more. I think about it. Should, should we but make the return on investment be be the cliffhanger? Let's do it one yeah. more time. So we're going to do this one more time, unfortunately, because we ran out of time. Um, but on Thursday. We will share with you how to actually get a client who wants to do it in a year to do it now. And I'm going to give you just a little sneak peek. The first question that I would ask them is this. That's not a problem. We can make it last as long as you want. You see, you want it to last another year. Yeah? Okay, great. Um, That's not a problem. But would you want to wait if you knew for sure that it was going to cost you an extra $4,000 to wait? Mm-hmm. that's the question would yeah. would you want to wait if you knew for sure that it was going to cost you another five thousand dollars to wait and we'll show you how to get that and to justify it on thursday yeah that is the magic question of that whole close to get it started would you want to wait if you knew it would cost you five thousand four thousand six thousand Maybe you have to do some numbers beforehand. You have to practice this a couple of times to figure out your numbers. But would you would you want to wait if you knew that it was going to cost you an extra four thousand dollars? They're typically either going to say no, or 
what do you mean? Yep. And that starts you down the whole path that we will discuss next time on how you how do you come up with that number. But that's the magic. You've got to get that first sentence, first question, excuse me, going. And it's all downhill from there. It's easy. It's easy from there. So, Guys, we really appreciate you joining us today. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, if you would, please, would you go over and hit those five stars for us? Leave us a quick review. Show us just a little bit of love. That's the payment for joining on those platforms. And if you are on Facebook or one of the other social programs, please, if you're watching live, put live down in the comments. If this was a replay, put replay down in the comments. And hey, would you please even throw somebody's name down in the comments that you think could benefit from the discussion about, I want to think about it. And then what we're going to actually cover for you on Thursday as well. Man, that would mean the world to us. Don, do you have any uh, final remarks before we sign off? No, uh... I think we have a video that kind of talks a little bit about the mansion event and shows some of that. We got to, if we can get that for, for them, that'd be great. Let's roll that beautiful footage. And Don, I'll see you on uh, the Profit Coach Mastermind tomorrow. By the way, guys, if you're an owner or a high-level manager and you want to get together with some other owners and high-level managers, you want to join us on Wednesdays in the Profit Coach Mastermind. It's a group on Facebook, but if you put PCM or um, owner's group or something like that down in the comments, I will get you some information on it. Again, if you're really? on the listening platform, then go ahead and text me 239-848-6533, 239-848-6533, and we'll get you hooked up into that group. Um, but that, that's a phenomenal group. And also, guys, um, I'll be out next week doing an on-site in Louisiana. Wanted to let you know that Don is available for a couple of on-sites over the next 90 days. So if you want somebody to come out to your shop and train your guys on all this stuff, Don might be exactly the fit that you're looking for. So you could put on-site down in the comments or go ahead and text me again at the number that I gave you and we will get you hooked up with some information on how to have Don come out. FYI, um, he's a former eight-figure contractor, so... You could definitely learn something. Check out this video for those of you who are on the social platforms. And uh, if you want information about this event that I'm going to show you about right now, uh, just give me a text. See you later, Don. Bye. Thanks, Gene. I'm Jonah Gorlitz. I'm from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I've been doing HVAC for about one and a half, two years now, and I'm I work for Instant Air out of Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Hi, I'm Kim King. I work with Leaves Nearby, and I've been working with Leaves Nearby for over eight years, and we work with HVAC, electrical, and plumbing contractors. So my name is Chris Laurentino from Comfort Specialists. We're out of Morris County, New Jersey. But I've been in the industry about 17 years now. mastermind because um, it's not just a sales course actually it's not really a sales course at all so, so the reason that I joined the mastermind is I've seen some people's results online that this is different from other events I've mentioned I've been to various contest events for quite a few years now they've really taught me how to understand and communicate to the customer well it's actually my second uh, mansion trip from the community of how well some people have done and I really wanted to be a part of that and this one is the best space it's the most glamorous space 
and it's basically one training that builds upon each other. Fair and that success, and it felt that the best way to achieve that was to actually get here and, and get involved in the training. And, and frankly, in, in my mind, there's no better way to train than, than in person. Since I've been in the class since December, my income has improved, my revenue for the company has improved, my customer relations have improved, and my call volume has decreased while the profits and everything else has increased. Being here is a unique experience that you can't replicate in just the Zoom class. There's so much more that you get out of this. And the other event has met here. It's a lot of information on a lot of topics where this is very concentrated. I feel like it, it allows you to have more focus. All right, ninjas, from now on, every time you get into your vehicle, every time you turn that gear, you push that little start button, and then every time you flip that radio on, I want you to remember that what you put into your brain at that moment when you get into your truck is going to determine your future. And then I want you to turn on the Black Belt Sales Podcast. Will you do that for us? See you next time, ninjas. Bye.